Hi, everyone, and welcome to Show Talk. Show Talk is filmed here at the Cranert Center for the Performing Arts, and for the next 20 minutes or so, we'll be talking about the creative process within the performing arts with the artists themselves. Today, we are particularly excited to welcome back two of the alumni of whom we are the most proud, Andrew Turner and Tyrone Phillips. Many of you may not be aware that Cranert Center, in addition to marquee artists and faculty research, also is, is kind of like a teaching hospital of bringing up some of the best and brightest performers in the country. Um, and these two are part of that. Andrew uh, is a singer, uh, got his master's in voice, and you, you may have seen him in Don Giovanni with Nathan. You may have seen him in Rape of Lucretia as the male chorus. Love him. La Boheme as Rodolfo. Songs for New World. And so uh, he's here. He's going headed out to Pittsburgh Opera to be part of their company on Friday, the 13th of August. And I want to show you a little clip of, of his singing. This, this is from Des Moines Metro Opera, um, a little beginning of an art song by Henri Duparc. <laughs> Beautiful. And we'd also like to welcome Tyrone Phillips. Tyrone was an actor in the theater department and also came back, didn't you, right after you had graduated to direct Dontrell, Who Kissed the Sea, written also by an alum. And he has gone on to found, if you can believe it, before he turned 30 years old, found a theater company of his own in Chicago, the Definition Theater. Very exciting project, and we are hoping to hear more about that. But we found a clip of you, Tyrone, talking about, about your directing. We want to share that with everyone. The process for iCINA has been one that is a brand new undertaking for any artist. Um, what's really exciting to me is that we were able to capture theater. We were able to tell a story that highlights a character that we see in a play, Julius Caesar, um, and kind of give them the full stage, give them center stage. And so for me, I'm all about my plays and the work I do is usually about equity and inclusion in some way. And so having this character who we meet for two seconds, be able to tell their story about how they're an artist, how they want to actually create in the world. And I love that Senna is an artist. Uh, for me, poetry is my, was my way into Shakespeare, truly. When I read this, it was also, of course, during the summer of George Floyd's death. And so the mistaken identity aspect really resonated in that, you know, here he is going outside his world. And just because of how he looks, um, he, he has ended up killed. He wants to be remembered for his poetry. He wants to be remembered for his words. Uh, and as the artist, I mean, that's what I do. Fantastic. Welcome, Tyrone. How's Definition Theater doing in our unprecedented times? Well, you know, crazily enough, we are doing really well. Uh, when the, the pandemic first started, we realized that as theaters, we have a responsibility to our communities, no matter if we're doing a play on stage or not. And so we found ways to basically, uh, I mean, down to literally donating masks to community members and things like that, found ways to basically make sure that we were taking care of the health crisis that was happening. And at the same time, we'll look backstage and figure out how we can continue to be sustainable and, and be around for many, many more years. So we're doing a strategic plan. Uh, we're in a capital <laughs> campaign for our new home in Woodlawn. We're doing a lot still, uh, but you know, the play will go on. We just actually wrapped our next production, which we will also release um, via streaming. Uh, we collaborated with some filmmakers. And so for us, we realized that you know, accessibility is number one. And so we want our community members to know, one, that our jobs and, and the arts are possible. Um, and so uh, even though we are hurting right now, it is a field that we need to express how to heal. It's interesting how um, in the pandemic where we've had to learn how to stream and, and kind of do that weird hybrid of pre-recording and still actually taking full takes of whole scenes and mixing it all together. 
that it does actually make it more accessible to everybody. We've noticed that with auditionings. Now people can audition online when they couldn't afford to go to New York and do that. You're That's possibly right. Good at it, was, it was really about just adding more collaborators when mm -hmm. you really look down to it, right? Yeah. So of course, fundraising is a different thing, but oh. to say, all it really took was more people, right? More people to work with, more people to collaborate with. Um, and I, I will say it was very clinical. You know, we we're social distancing and the actors took their masks off to do the recordings and it was it's just a 94 page script so it was quite the undertaking <laughs> but we wrapped a week ago and so really excited to see what that's like yeah, we are too that's yeah we can't wait to see andrew in the world of singing what's it like right now i mean when it comes to singing and you're talking about in this space i feel like it's the same thing it's been a lot of collaboration and connecting with others who are different or who has who have different talents and special skills and connecting with them. And so for me specifically, I've been connecting with a lot of people who are working in the film era, or I've been using that medium as well to express my talents, whether it's through Zoom or YouTube or any of those uh, platforms itself. But that's what it's been like, is just been singing online. There's some people that are now starting to, you know, have the space to do some live productions or live shows but when we were in the thick of it it was just let's get together I have a camera let's do this it really so. is interesting for you know when I was when I was uh, a student my my teacher he was old when I met him and he ended up starting his career during the depression so everything was shut down in sort of the same way and he said it it kind of forced everybody into in those days he wasn't going to be just an opera singer. He was going to sing on the Carnation Breakfast Hour on the radio, and he was going to be um, do oratorios. And he, he basically sing anything. Have you? I mean, both. I mean, obviously, um, uh, Tyrone, you studied. I mean, here they focus a lot on Shakespeare and some of the classics. And obviously, if you're getting a voice degree, like we heard, you know, Andrew, you're singing in French. So, you know that that foundation is laid. But have you found that this is, in a way been a wonderful excuse to break through that and yeah I, mean, I i i yes i think so i i have found the space to create in a different way and understand how much of a creator i am rather than just a singer or a dancer or you know a video producer. i like I, I recently did this project called recover with recovery, which is um, meant to be a space for different collaborators and different artists of different mediums to come together and express themselves through their art. Um, and I just started with myself because I was like, I can't wait for everyone to <laughs> to want to jump in. <laughs> but I had to I had to do my own advertising. I had to uh, videotape it myself, edit. Like I learned so many different things as an artist in that moment that I was like, I know I can do this, you know? Even if I'm not an expertise at it, I know I have some type of artistry in it. And mm -hmm. that's something that's been beautiful to understand about us as creators and as artists is that there's so much more to what we have um, than the focused you know, skill that we've been trying right. to so, do. So that treehouse perspective has been able to make what you do better. I suppose, yeah. or at least have a broader perspective. Yeah. Tyrone, what about you? Same kind of experience? Yeah, I would say, you know, again, me more so hiring because you know, the company. So luckily, I, yeah, right. I have some hands to help, um, which will be crucial, I think, as time continues. But for me, the classics are always kind of in my work <laughs> as a director, as an artist, as an actor, because that's the training, right? So uh, Definition Theater, the mission is basically to expand upon the canon that we already have. So as much as I love it, I also recognize right, that is a voice of a certain type of person and maybe that time has come. And so when I see a new play or I approach a new piece of work, um, I'm always giving it the reverence that we give classics, right? All the homework we do, all of the research, right? All of the, the, the you know, like, iambic pentameter, the, there's just so much that goes into preparing a classical speech and so, or text. And so for me, it's about giving these new stories 
stories from people on the train, the stories with people, you know what I'm saying? There, there's mm-hmm. some characters in this world. Real. And so yeah. really giving them their tools to say, this is my story. Let me translate it for the stage. Let me translate it for the screen. But then put the same resources that you would give a, re- a, a Shakespeare play behind this new work. Have you found as a, sorry, have you found as a, I'm assuming since you're a young company, you're a fairly small company, has that helped you be more flexible and agile considering what's going on? Completely. I mean, the company was founded, luckily, on the same principles. Uh, You know, we're a multicultural ensemble that wants to highlight on and off stage positions. And Mm -hmm. again, just making sure that people know this is this is possible. Um, The arts are necessary and you can have a career in it. And so for us, really, it's just been COVID allowed us truly to continue to bridge that gap between film and theater intentionally and yeah. so it wasn't hard for me to sell it to a board or supporters they they got okay we can't have live audiences right now so how do we still spread the word about our company about the mission and about like what the arts can do for your life did you feel that you had to adjust your work as an actor or a director for the camera how do you feel uh, yeah 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 definitely there's the you know for the, for on stage you give a lot more physically and and overall, because the people are literally right there, and you can think about that person that's in the balcony that's still paid to be there. Um, whereas in camera and film, it's right there, so it's a lot more intimate. It's a lot more pulled back. Uh, the attention still has to be there, but it's a lot less work, <laughs> if you will. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, it was interesting for us to learn, like, oh, if, you know, the sooner you turn around and and get get redressed the more takes you can do, right? So we, we, were, we were definitely theater kids figuring out this new kind of collaboration of the art yeah. form. Isn't time totally kind of, different? It's, it feels oh, completely. like completely totally different. Completely. <laughs> yeah, and I also feel like the magic that's in the theater, you don't get the grace of the magic when it's on camera. <laughs> no, you hear all the flaws. I mean, I'm sure, Andrew, you notice this too. You play it back and you're like, oh, oh. that really wasn't quite in tune. <laughs> and if it's live, you're like, well, it was kind of in tune. I, I don't it was know. moving. Oh, it kicked my... <laughs> You know, they were clapping. I heard them, but when you're recording, it's like, oh, crickets. <laughs> Literally, there was a moment where I, I did. I was working with Virginia Opera for a couple months this spring, and we they finally opened up some of their concert halls, and so it was with the Virginia Arts Festival Symphony or the Virginia Symphony, um, and. You know, sometimes you just have to realize, like, man, it is completely different when you're listening to a symphony on Spotify than actually going to an actual concert hall and listening to so many different colors just coming at you. Like, it's incredible. You know yeah. what I mean? And you walk in there and you're like, okay. You know, you could just take a breath and be like, this is it. Like, this is what we came here to do again. So Yeah, I have, I have found that in some ways... There is a, there's a, such an, you know, in a, in a, if you're going to record something, it's going to be obviously most of the production stuff is post production, all happens in the back end instead of the front end, which is a performance kind of thing that's live. But you can get that kind of magic from film if you do it right, but it's totally different than if it's live. Something about those right. people being there just, and, and I, you know, Tyrone, I agree, and I think Andrew, you probably agree too, that you kind of need them both right you can't you have to tell a slightly different story depending on the canvas you're you're and the and the stuff you're painting with or whatever so tyrone what happens this fall if yeah. i mean you don't have a crystal ball any more than we do but like I don't know, in, your, yeah, we're, we're, in your favorite world <laughs> we're erring on the safe side uh so we again so the last show we just did we filmed without an audience it will be released uh late october slash november um, it's a very haunting play about the history of America and it kind of a take on what the arts and the actors in general, what their role is in the world when we're in crisis like these. And so it'll be very interesting to see what the audience thinks about this one. Um, is this the one called say, America V 2.1? That's right. That's yeah. it. The America V 2.1, the sad demise and eventual extinction of the American Negro. Yeah, I was Full reading title. that. Yeah. <laughs> Full title uh, by Stacey Rose. She's incredible. Um, she was with us along the way of also preserving it. And there is a pressure, I, I would say, a healthy pressure um, when it comes to, again, preserving these things on film because you know automatically the life flies, right? It's just a little bit longer. 
um, I, I, I love hate that theater goes away and some of those experiences you can never you know have again or look at again and the poster and the program is all you have. Um, but with this one, it's like, well, you're preserving these words for quite a long time. Um, and so you want to make sure you do it right. And so uh, we're, we're teaching us as well right now in, in the summer. Right now, we're looking at some education programs that we can just be hands on in the community again. But uh, we're still producing and then that capital campaign, mm -hmm. <laughs> raising funds for our new home. How much are you trying to raise? A five million total. Okay. Five million dollars, and then, people. Is it is it a matching kind of gift? Have you gotten any help from? Well, we got uh, one like grant from one point six million from the city of Chicago, mm -hmm. and so we will be end, uh, matching that first. That's our first kind of um, step. We'll finish matching that by the end of this year, and then with that, we'll be able to break ground. So we're we're we're, we're moving along. That's fantastic. And tell us again where it is going to be the new home. Yeah, so it'll be in Woodlawn in Chicago. It's a south uh, neighborhood, south side neighborhood, Woodlawn on 64th and Cottage Grove. Okay. Very nice. And Andrew, where, what are you going to do when you get to Pittsburgh? Do you know? Um, well, we are doing some pop-up, or I guess they call them brown bag concerts, but they have a season ready to go. We're doing um, Magic Flute. We're doing Carmen. Um, some Two new works called... Uh, the Rose Elf and also in a Grove. And then we're doing Blue, which is oh, yeah. been kind of making its Tizori. turn around. Yeah. So yes, yeah, Janine Tizori. So um, I'm in all the productions. So if you want to come to any of those shows, yeah. you'll see me. We'll be there. Will they be, will yeah. they be live streaming them as well? I'm assuming. Maybe, I'm not sure. Keep... I'm not sure yet. I don't know what that looks like because I know they're planning to try to have audiences. So I don't know what they want to do. Or how they're going to do mm -hmm. it, but um, I know Pittsburgh's yeah. pretty innovative. They've got some really interesting ideas for something instead of third titles. They're having yeah. they have an app that uh, that'll it'll play in your it'll it'll, it'll like oh, connect really? to Talk your to it, yeah. your hearing aid for people like to me. Your hearing aid. <laughs> well, I know that the season and everything is up on the <laughs> website now, so most of that stuff will probably be. Well the, first, well, the first thing you have to do, and you'll find this out when you get to Pittsburgh, you need to buy a jersey because that's what everybody wears in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All Steelers all the time. All the time. You can't go anywhere without seeing yellow and black. or It's just, it's, no, I mean, they don't realize it until they move away that, that people don't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously. Some people don't. Yeah. yeah, some people don't. All right. Well, thank you so much, both of you. It's great to see your faces and hear you, and we're proud of what you're doing. Yeah, and keep yeah. in touch, and uh, best of luck this year. And we'll try to come up and see. Um, Tyron is going to ask, the, the, the new play that you just finished, will you be doing a live version of it as well, or is it just visible on your website? We are talking about it. That's a great question. So we're talking. It will definitely be available virtually so you can watch it in the comfort of your home, but we are talking about um, some, some gatherings, so maybe hopefully we'll be having a movie theater running it out. And then having like an opening night crowd at least, and you know, basically right. make sure the energy so, is still there. So the definitiontheater.org. The right. That's right, definitiontheater.org. And okay. it's theater with T R E at the end. T R E. Okay, T -R -E. check it out. Alana. Check it out, everybody. All right. All right. Thanks for joining us on Show Talk. Thank Take care you of yourselves. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Performing arts, Americana, a thriving in Champagne, Urbana. You'll hear a trumpet or a piano, postmodern dance, or play whatever you might fancy. Follow your ears and you will enter a place we call the Grand Center, a shining artist at the center, the very envy of Broadway, a place so practical. And yet so miracle, it is a miracle on the prairie, where all the arts connect, combine and intersect. It is a symphony without the parking problems. Performing arts, Americana, thriving in Champagne, Urbana. You know that everyone's a fan of the Kravitz Center for the it fills our souls and warms our hearts. The lights are going down, it's about to start. <laughs>